Hi, my name is Manish Gupta, and in this video, I'm going to talk about this paper Realm, which is about retrieval augmented language model pre-training. This is a very old paper, actually, uh, sometime, something like 2018, 2019 paper. But uh, the reason I'm discussing this is because it formed an important basis for this new field called as retrieval augmented language model. And I plan to sort of talk about uh, other papers in this field in the next few videos. OK, so let's talk about Realm. Realm stands for retrieval augmented language model. Uh, uh, it, it basically says it's a language model. So therefore, Realm is basically just a bird based language model. It's just that it's augmented with a retriever. OK, so let's understand what this means. So let's consider this particular simple task. Let's say if I want to figure out we paid 20 watt at the Buckingham Palace gift shop. Well, uh, typical mass language modeling says I'll try to guess what it is. But uh, augmenting, uh, you know, if you basically, let's say, had access to Wikipedia corpus, maybe what you could do is to basically learn a neural retriever which goes to Wikipedia corpus, figures out relevant documents, and then those relevant documents are also fed to our BERT model so as to make a good guess of what could be filled in this blank. So, and therefore, uh, the BERT model rightly predicts pounds there, uh, and that's basically retrieval augmented, uh, you know, masked language modeling in some ways. Okay. So now, uh, now that you've understood what this means, let's look at how this is trained. So it's trained in two parts, pre-training and fine-tuning. So at pre-trained time, literally what you see on the right side is what is done. It's called as the mass language modeling task, uh, but with retrieval, right? So you try to predict the Y, which is basically the masked word, given X, the overall context, the entire sentence, and retrieve document Z. So these two documents, which are basically getting retrieved from the document collection. Remember that this is a completely unsupervised task, right? So the mask, uh, so the idea is to mask salient spans rather than just doing a, a random span, a random masking. You basically want to mask entities and dates because that is what you would want to retrieve later uh, for, let's say, question answering task. Um, you also want to allow for null documents in the sense that sometimes it may happen that you do not want to get the answer, the fill in the blank, or essentially answer to some question based on any documents in the collection. So you should accommodate for that as well. And you should prohibit trivial retrievals while pre-training. The idea is that maybe in the pre-training corpus, you have a document which exactly matches that sentence. Now you don't want to really you know, let the model cheat and just basically try to fill in the blank by exactly copy pasting the word from a sentence uh, occurring in the document collection. So you want to avoid that. Now at fine tune time, well, they fine tune using open question answering task. So the idea is to be able to uh, answer questions like what's the angle of an equilateral triangle, not just based on the, the, the memory uh, that the model has in its weights, but also by making use of this extra knowledge corpus, right? So at fine tune time, you basically take the input question, you go to the knowledge corpus, figure out uh, related documents, top care related documents, get them and uh, you know augment them uh, and give them as input to your BERT model and hope that the BERT model will come up with the right answer. So this is the open question answering task. You essentially try to predict the start and end spans, given question and the retrieved document Z. And from those retrieved documents, you're trying to predict the start and end spans of the matching answer. Now, uh, if you want to retrieve, let's say, top K matching documents, you want to retrieve it efficiently and augment them to the input for language models. So how do you do this efficiently even when your corpus may have like millions of documents? Now that is done using what is called as MIPS, maximum inner product search. The idea is that when a query comes in, for example, we paid 20 uh, dash dash dash, right? Uh, what you uh, already have done is to take all the documents in your document collection and embed them into an embedding space, right? Um, so and then uh, so so you have pre-computed the document embeddings, and then when a query embed query comes in, you embed it and then try to figure out uh, the nearest neighbors, nearest documents that match the embedding with this particular query. Um, so um, the the way the idea is that it has to be done efficiently, and which is what is done using MIPS, which is an approximate nearest neighbor search algorithm. Uh, you refresh period. The, the idea is that this index needs to be refreshed periodically because as you essentially train your BERT model, um, uh, you know uh, the embeddings may actually get better. So you start with some initialized embeddings, which have to be also initialized carefully because you don't want to start with random embeddings. But then as, as you continue to um, do question answering, fine tuning on question answering task, or, or even doing uh, pre-training and you know trying to do the MLM task, your retriever uh, should basically make use of the source of, of the improved embeddings per token, right? So that's 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 what happens. So you basically have a, a, a parallel process which is running, which basically uh, takes the MLM trainer. Uh, which has two processes, MLM trainer and index builder. So after every 500 training steps, the MLM trainer says, hey, this is the theta. This is the uh, way I, I will tell you to compute embedding. And then the index updates based on that embedding. Yeah. 
Now they experimented with this model uh, using three different open question answering data sets, natural questions, web questions and curated trick. Um, and uh, the knowledge corpus for retrieval purpose was basically English Wikipedia documents, uh, which was split into chunks uh, of 288 BERT word piece. Uh, word, word pieces, right? So each document in some ways for building this MIPS index was 288 per word pieces. Uh, they had like 13 million such, um, uh, you know, uh, such such documents which were indexed into this, uh, which were which are put into this index. Now what is found uh, is that Realm outperforms the largest T5 11 billion model while being 30x smaller, right? So this is some comparison on uh, a natural questions data set. So as you observe, a typical VM25 with BERT just gives you 26.5 uh, accuracy, while Realm, which is just 300 million parameters, gives you 40.4. Now as you observe, T5 with 11 billion parameters is not as good. It's basically uh, six points or so uh, worse compared to Realm. Here is an example of how Realm helps. So if the question is any equilateral triangle is easily constructed using a straight edge and compass because three is dash prime. Now expected answer is format prime. And then, you know, if you just use the BERT model, you will not be able to get the right answer. But if you used uh, uh, the Realm model with, with K equal to one, with just one retrieved document, you would get the right answer with, uh, you know, 100% accuracy. But well, uh, the Realm model actually uses top K. And with even with that, you get very good, uh, uh, very good probability for uh, for the format, for the word format. And well, it's not a single, uh, although it's a single word, well, it's basically three different tokens as per word word pieces, BERT word pieces, right? So that's that um, realm is basically just a language model along with the knowledge retriever component. Retriever is supported by knowledge corpus, Wikipedia in this particular case, and the fast uh, approximate nearest neighbor search algorithm called as MIPS. Um, these guys showed great results for open question answering task. And the reason this, this paper is super important is that this paper was followed up by many other studies in the future, RAG, Retro, and Atlas, which we will discuss in the next few videos. Thank you.